Hello there, everybody. This is General Snivy, and welcome back to more of the Super Mario Brothers 3 playthrough. In today's session, we're going to continue right from where we left off, which is World 7, aka Pipe Maze, or Pipe Land, if you want to be PC about it. Hmm. Don't know why I had a bit of muscle pain in my chest. That's eh, nothing to be concerned about. I'm fine. All right. With that in mind, let's begin level one. Let's go. Pipe Maze is going to be one of those worlds where, well, the entire overworld map is covered with pipes. And trying to figure out where you have to go is not exactly the most difficult thing in the world. It is kind of straightforward. You go from one end of the world to the other and follow a series of pipes until you reach the very end. Within this first level here, we will be going up and down a series of pipes, and it is kind of trial and error based. However, if you... If you know exactly what you're doing, you can get through this level relatively quickly. Also, uh, in the last session I mentioned how you can theoretically beat the game incredibly fast, and just warp straight to the credits. Well, I think this is the level where you can do that by putting Koopa Troopas and just more or less kicking them in the right spots and doing certain actions a certain way. You can find some sort of invisible pipe that's like on the very corner of a screen as you're wrapping around. Go down that pipe and you'll trigger a series of really strange events you'll see more or less a glitchy light show <laughs> and then after that you'll be warped straight to uh the princess's location completely skipping bowser god damn it of course uh executing that particular glitch is really damn difficult and it's incredibly precise and if you're off by even just a little bit, that's it. You're going to be wasting a ton of time. Okay, let's go ahead and try this again. Hopefully not kill ourselves once more. Oh my god, come on. So then, you may be wondering, why am I streaming today? Today's Sunday. I normally don't stream on Sundays, not like I used to. But the reason why I'm streaming today is because tomorrow I have a doctor's appointment and I didn't even realize I had one until just this past week. So, due to that, due to the fact that I have a doctor's appointment tomorrow, tomorrow afternoon to be precise, uh, unfortunately I'm not going to be able to stream tomorrow, so I figure I might as well go ahead and do it today. So that way, that way I can, uh, dang it, that way it's not like I'm missing any sort of days whatsoever. I still did that time this week. I still, I still streamed at least, uh, twice this week. This is the first of two days, of course, but regardless. Anyway, the reason why I brought it, brought this up is because this week I'm only going to be able to stream for two days. God damn it. Stupid piranhas! Anyway, um, as I was trying to say, I'm only going to be able to stream twice this week. Once, which is today, of course. And... Wednesday should be free. At least it should be. If not, I'll be sure to let you all know via Twitter and also the community tab on YouTube. If I remember to actually put it there. Regardless, the reason why uh, this week is going to be completely swamped is at the very end of this week, this is the week where... 
I have to be fully prepared to go to my aunt's house and watch their dog Murphy over the course of next week while they're on vacation in Florida. Oh, come on. Really? Hmm. I wonder, how do you get to that room with those uh, pipes and those coins? <laughs> I don't think anyone's ever figured that out. Also, I had an AVGM moment. Screw you, game. <laughs> okay. But yeah, this week is going to be really, really hectic. I have to be fully prepared to uh, go to my aunt's place, watch Murphy, and that's really about it. Other than a couple of doctor's appointments for both my mother and myself, there's not much else going on this week. Also, preparation is another thing, too, that I do have to keep in mind. There is one thing I haven't mentioned yet within this level. Oh, God damn it! I was trying to... Oh, my God. It's not that hard. I say that, and it's the hardest freaking thing ever because I overshoot my goddamn jump, and I'm panicking. Oh, okay, that's better. Always. Always. <laughs> I can never pick up a damn shell! Never! Why is it that you can't pick up a shell without jumping on it a million damn times? <laughs> it shouldn't be that difficult to do. And yet, I'm just sucking balls at this wonderful game. <laughs> God damn, how am I having so much trouble on this one damn level? This is not a hard level at all. It really isn't. Perhaps the floaty controls are what's getting to me? I have no idea. Then again, I just plain suck. Again, see what I mean? You can't pick up shells. It's practically impossible. You jump way too damn low, and you're more than likely going to bonk and end up jumping back on top of the shell before you have a chance to pick it up again. I swear to God, it just seems like picking up shells is probably the most difficult thing in the entire game. Even though, uh, why did I say probably in the... Mm. <coughs> I can't speak English. And I also can't get through this goddamn level without getting, like, a million game overs. <laughs> okay. Speaking of game overs, if you happen to get one, like I mentioned before, you just get back... You just get sent back to the world... The beginning of the world that you're in. Or back to a quote-unquote checkpoint within a world. Might as well grab it. I'm gonna lose it immediately due to these frickin' piranha plants again. What did I tell you? Okay. Now then, let's try this again. Nice shot. Whew, there we go. Jeez, that was annoying. Hmm. Well, I'm definitely glad that's over. <laughs> and that was only the first damn level. 
We still got other levels to go through yet in this wonderful land of pipes. <laughs> All right, level two. Let's go. Hmm, fire flower. Okay. This can be useful. Especially considering the fact that it can be used to kill frickin' flowers like these. Wonder what's down here. Hmm, that was weird. The enemy just suddenly appeared dead. <laughs> Maybe that was the same enemy I killed before, and yet it just wrapped itself. Wait, what? It was like, why did I suddenly go down the pipe again? And when it comes to this part of the level in particular, you do have to uh, create an invisible bridge in order to uh, proceed forward. <laughs> Although I think if you have like the Super Leaf or the P-Wing, then you'll be able to just simply bypass that entire section. However, if you don't have either one of those things or if you just chose not to use one, then you'll have to just create the bridge normally. Or just create certain parts of the bridge. Whatever is easier for you or whatever you feel like doing. Or if you feel like uh, putting on your speedrunning shoes. In which case, prepare to get burned. Considering the fact that this is the seventh world in the in the game, we're almost at the very end. And of course, considering that, we have probably the most difficult obstacles to take on in the entire game yet. We still got a ways to go if we're going to uh, finish up this game. A little bit. Thankfully, it's not going to be the most difficult thing ever. Also, navigating through this whole, whole pipe maze thing is not the most difficult thing in the world. It's really just a matter of process of elimination. And really, using logic to uh, navigate your way from one part of the pipe maze to the other. Usually, if a pipe maze leads to... Uh, if there's a path that leads to a level, that's the pipe you need to take. All right, let's pick up an item here. Oh, I've reached uh, maximum capacity. And I just overwritten my P-Wing. Well, shoot. I didn't realize I was full on items. <laughs> Wish I knew that before. Before I went ahead and just uh, overwritten my item. All right. Since that is the case, might as well go ahead and throw this on. Ooh, Starman. Ah, screw you, game! Had to take away my frickin' pee power. Just after I jumped into the damn air. Really, game? Why do you have to do that stupid crap? Seriously, that's not cool. That's also lame. I hate that. Okay. Honestly, I thought I was going to die there, or... Mm. Okay, why is it that you can slide into Koopa Troopas, but you can't slide into Spinies? I don't get it. Also, why did it take away my A-Press? Again, what is up with the freaking button registration? It just does not work! Mm -mm -mm. 
Well, this is what I get for playing on a freaking 4K television. Input latency up the freaking ass. Also, bullshit, too. I'm surprised that even worked. Fuck you. <laughs> okay, seriously, why the hell can't I get past this one goddamn level now? Like, I was having trouble on level frickin' one on World 7. Got two frickin' game overs before I could even go anywhere. And now I can't get past this frickin' level. What the hell? Okay. Again with the frickin' bullshit of the opposite logic. I don't know if there's any real way you can manipulate the logic of where the items are going to go after they appear. Yeah, there is. You just have to face the opposite goddamn direction as soon as the item appears. See what I tell you? Who knew there was, like, another Starman and yet another one? <laughs> okay. I see what the freaking gimmick is here. Other than the opposite bullshit. Oh my god. Are you serious right now? Wow, what a waste of a good star man and a good frickin' life. <laughs> good lord above. Pretty nice that I managed to kill the frickin' lack to, at least for now, but I know it'll appear again. Like right now. Plus that shit! Ugh, oh, man, that was awful. But I'm definitely glad we managed to get through it somehow. Alright. Thank you! Jesus! <laughs> mm, you would think I would have better luck when it comes to that minigame, but again, timing is absolutely key. Yet, for whatever reason, I suck at timing that. I really do. I don't know what it is. Ooh. We have an underwater auto-scroller level. I think this is the first time we had one of these. Granted, we've had uh, auto scrollers before, but even so, not ones that are underwater. <laughs> and of course, we have Big Bertha back. <laughs> Come on, really? Freaking blooper off screen. Just goes to prove that I cannot maintain a power up for longer than five seconds. Because I just suck that much at the game. Oh, great. Now we have a frickin' jellyfish death trap. Okay. Never mind. Damn it! Not only do we have a jellyfish death trap, but we also have frickin' bloopers. Okay. Maybe this will work out better. We can just throw fireballs underwater and burn everything in sight. Although, I can't really do that if I can't maintain my goddamn power-ups for longer than 10 seconds. Oh, man.
There is one thing that's definitely worth noting when it comes to this whole underwater section. Try to maintain power-ups, especially for death traps like these. Although it is a lot easier said than done, especially considering... <sighs> I don't even... Okay, are you serious right now? I killed the main blooper and yet it's still... It's offspring still managed to kill me somehow. Oh man. <laughs> Sometimes auto scrollers can be incredibly stressful, especially if the screen moves far too quickly and there are too many obstacles. Okay. At least this level is done. Man. <laughs> so far, today just simply has not been my day. That's for sure. Alright, let's see what we got in here. Well, we do have a bit of a pipe work, uh... No. I think what I'm trying to say is we have a bit of a pipe labyrinth here. Oh, Lord. You can't be serious. Okay. Come on. We can do this. Of course. Don't you just love it when the game just loves, just throws invisible blocks at you and you don't know where the hell it is you're supposed to go and you just have to guess? Especially when it's like they're a freaking death trap or something and they're placed in such bad locations. Thankfully, it's not as bad as, say, Super Mario Brothers: The Lost Levels where it got a little bit crazy with that kind of shit. Now I want to know what's down here. Oh, Super Leaf. Okay, I'll take it. If I have to guess, I think you need the Super Leaf in order to even finish the level. God damn it. Oh, you can't be serious. Yep, I knew it. I knew the frickin' uh, hitbox bullshit was going to strike again. <laughs> I think the only way you can get the tail whack to even work is if you're standing still. If you're moving even an inch, you will die. There is no getting around it. Oh, great. If I have to guess, if you want to get through there, you do have to sacrifice a power-up. But it's a better idea just to run up here and just grab these frickin' blocks that are all over the place. And throw them around instead. Wait, what? What came out of that? Oh, more up. I could definitely use many of those. <laughs> Whew. Okay, what was that bullshit? I can't seem to get three of a kind anymore when it comes to that for whatever reason. All right. Nope. I can't remember where any of these freaking cards are. <laughs> it has been a little bit of time since I've last played this. Although it's only been like a day. So, 
What's my excuse, really? Alright. I believe our next stop is going to be in here. Because the pipe that leads from a uh, level 5 onward, I think that one is a dead end. At least until you take on the castle. Let's see and make sure. Yeah, as I thought, it's a dead end. <laughs> and there's no way to get over there, at least as of right now. Although, I think if you destroy a castle or clear a certain level, then the path will open as a shortcut. So if you get a game over, you can get back to the later part of the world. Or something to that extent, I'm not sure. Alright, let's take on this level. This is a fire flower gauntlet, or a piranha plant gauntlet, really. This is considered to be a pretty damn difficult level. And the reason why it can be considered really difficult is... Throughout the place, there's a lot of uh, piranha plants that shoot fireballs and ones that just come out of the pipes and just stick out like sore thumbs. However, if you manage to get through the gauntlet, you get an item. In this case, it's a P-Wing. Sweet. I wonder where this leads to. Let's find out now. Come on, up we go. Okay, this is a shortcut to level 9. Unfortunately, we can't quite use that path just yet. Not until we destroy the castle. Not this castle, but the next one after it. <laughs> I haven't even brought it up yet, but starting in World 6, there is at least two castle levels per world now. <sighs> okay. Let's do this. Now, this particular castle is a really annoying one. It's not the most annoying thing in the world, but it is still a castle that can be considered infamous. As you can see, the castle is pretty dang empty. However, you'll soon find out that the place is kind of deserted for the most part. However, we have to take a certain path in order to reach the very end of the castle. However, to access this hidden path, it's located within the first room, I believe. Within one of these blocks should lie a P-switch. There it is. Funny enough, this room can be used to uh, gather a metric ton of coins. Also, that piece switch will constantly respawn over and over, so long as you uh, leave the room and re-enter. There's also not a lot of time to complete this level either, so we need to move. Otherwise, we're going to run out of time. Okay. Let's see what's down here. Down here we have a giant block and the Tanuki suit. Sweet. Although it still sucks that uh, we're going to be running out of time soon. Okay, so... What am I 
makes the Tanuki suit different from uh, the other suit, aka the Super Leaf? Well, the difference between it and the Super Leaf is... If you push down and B, you'll turn yourself into a statue. The statue is completely invulnerable. The statue is invulnerable and it only lasts for a short period of time, which does kind of suck, but oh well. Okay, here's the door we need to go in, I think. Nope. <sighs> Crap. Well, unfortunately, we're going to be running out of time this time around. It really sucks that they don't give you hardly any time to complete this level at all. What's even worse is, if you run out of time, you automatically die and lose your power-ups. <laughs> so, that is unfortunate. It really does suck that you only have 200 seconds to complete this entire level. I think in the SNES version, aka Super Mario Bros. All-Stars, and even Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Bros. 3, they'll give you... I think 100 more seconds, so 300 seconds total. Okay. I think grabbing the fire flower was completely unnecessary. One thing you could do here is, since this room constantly gives you a bunch of coins every time you push down that P-switch, you can use it as a way of getting extra lives and just keep getting lives over and over again. However, once the castle is destroyed, you won't be able to uh, return to that point. You won't be able to return to this level, so that is something you do have to keep in mind. It probably wouldn't be a bad idea for me to do some live grinding. Okay, yeah. So, in order to get out of this level, what you have to do here is grab the Tanuki suit. Okay. Let's actually do this properly. I said properly, damn it! There we go, Jesus. So, you have to use this uh, Tanuki suit... You have to use the Tanuki suit to get to that pipe that is, like, above the second room. If you don't do that, then you're going to be stuck in this level forever. You can also use the P-Wing to quickly get through the level 2. That is another thing you could do, but hey, I'm just saying. God damn it. <sighs> All right, and as far as this pipe is concerned, I believe this is a shortcut back to the first area, so you don't have to do like the first five levels or so, and you can just jump straight into level six once, uh, or if you end up getting a game over. So that is pretty neat. All right, on to this level. Now, this level is a pretty unique one. Much like level 1 here in World 7. Okay. I believe this is the 
one? No, it isn't. Okay. It was level one. Okay. As I was trying to say, this level, much like uh, the first level here in uh, World 7, there is a thing called screen scrolling. Also, that Koopa is having a seizure. <laughs> That's hilarious. Oh, God damn it. Are you serious right now? I can't get up there. All right, back to what I was saying. The unique thing about this level, besides these uh, transparent platforms here, is the fact that there is uh, screen scrolling of sorts. So what do I mean by that exactly? Well, if you go from the left-hand side of the screen all the way to the right. Okay, seriously? If you go from the left-hand side of the screen over to the right side, you'll appear on the other side. So that is pretty neat. It's a pretty fun level. So because of this, you have to be creative with the way you go across platforms, especially these transparent ones. Oh, God damn it. Just jumped way too damn high. And it just goes to show that I can't maintain a freaking power up for an entire level run. It's just not possible for me. I just suck that freaking bad at the game. Oh dear. Running out of time already? I didn't think I was going that slow. Jesus. <laughs> well, I'll be. At least the level's done now. And we managed to make it with just a little bit of time left to spare. May not be much, but it's better than nothing, that's for sure. Alright, on to the next set of levels. And... I believe this is going to be the final set for this world, too. So, level 7, 8, 9, and the castle. Okay. What should we pull out this time? I guess the regular mushroom will do just fine. So, let's go ahead and pull that out. And let's begin. Oh, this is going to be a fun one. So in this level, you have to maintain the Invincibility Starman throughout the entirety of the stage. There are several blocks hidden or placed throughout the entire stage where you can go to uh, grab another Starman. But you have to move fast. You can't get stuck on very many walls. If you do, then unfortunately you're going to die. <laughs> And that's the level. Short and sweet, but damn, can it be stressful. Not the most stressful thing in the world, but it's still... It's still pretty extreme at times. Of course. Time to just slightly too late. Alright, level 8. Looks like we have another one of these uh, Piranha Plant Hell levels. <laughs> I thought I was going to die for sure there. I'll gladly take that. Thank you very much. Kind of wish I could move a little bit faster in this level. I knew it. 
I knew I was going to die, too. I was thinking I was going to end up jumping a little too high. And end up hitting the freaking spike ball, which the one piranha plant moving across the ground was using. That'll work. Never mind, because apparently I suck so goddamn bad that I literally can't get through the level without taking a single goddamn hit. Is there a any sort of a uh, hidden mushroom that I just don't know about? Well, regardless, I don't think I'll ever know. Oh, come on, really? I swear to God, I can't get through this without taking a freaking hit. Hmm. I guess I'll break this out. Might as well give myself some armor here. Though, granted, I'm probably going to lose it within like five seconds. I'm surprised that even worked. Usually that results in me taking a hit. Okay. At least this path gave me something in return. Even though it may not seem like it was much of anything, except just damage, <laughs> it was some extra coins, which... God damn it. I knew that was going to happen, too. I just goddamn fucking knew it. I literally can't get through this whole stage without taking any freaking damage. And there's no power-ups here, either. There's none. There's a star, man. Hooray. But unfortunately, I can't fully utilize it and get very far. And of course, that shit happens all the time now. This is probably another one of those levels where it's a better idea just to fly over it. And say, fuck it. Okay, again with the bullshit. I literally can't get through this without dying. It's not possible. <sighs> it's like these piranha plants are in perfect sync. Of course, there was nothing there that was pointless. And now I'm going to die immediately. What did I tell you? Immediate death because I was not moving fast enough with the frickin' star man. Okay, seriously, screw this goddamn level. Again, I got stuck for, like, two seconds. What a fucking waste of a star, man. What a fucking waste. Of course, now I gotta create another fucking save state. Because I can't get through this fucking level! And I don't want to use another goddamn P-Wing right now. 
that is just a bad idea. But I may not have a goddamn choice. I might not have a, have a choice. It's like, I gotta use it or I can't get past the level. <sighs> Got stuck on a frickin' step. Fantastic. Fan-fucking-tastic! I get stuck on a frickin' step of pipes! And I can't go any fr faster than, like, one mile per hour. <laughs> if that. Christ. Again with the bullshit. No way that should have hit me there. No fucking way. That was clearly in the pipe. And I'm just so goddamn frustrated now. I'm just charging into my doom. I'm trying to get through this level as fast as I possibly can. Okay, just gotta shut the hell up and concentrate. Yep, of course. Ran out of vulnerability time. Let's try it. I got stuck on the fucking pipe stairs! Of course! Now I'm going to die! What did I tell you? I'm like a fortune teller! <laughs> oh, this level sucks! Yeah, fuck it. I give up. I give up. I'm not dealing with this. We still got the rest of the game to go through yet. <laughs> it really sucks that it has to come down to this. Using a P-Wing on this god-awful frickin' level. How hard is it to hit a block consecutively? Apparently it's probably the most difficult thing in the world. Why did I say probably again? That seems to be a freaking word I love to use on a frequent daily basis. I can't English. I can't grammar. <laughs> okay. Done. Hmm. <laughs> Just goes to show how really good I am at this wonderful game. I'm not. Oh. A Tanuki suit. Neat. At least that mushroom house gave me that. Although I'm not sure what the actual chances are of uh, you getting that, but regardless, at least it was there. Okay. For this level, this is another one of those maze levels that you do have to go through. Though it's not the most difficult thing in the world. It's just follow the broken pipes for the most part and ride the very top until eventually you reach a dead end. And once you reach that dead end, also, fuck you. That was bullshit. Anyway, as I was trying to say, once you reach the dead end, just go back the way you came. And just take a different path. It's kind of like uh, solving a real-life maze, although it's nowhere near as difficult or as time-consuming. Although, p getting these frickin' blocks, especially the middle one, can be really damn hard, for whatever reason. What's also really damn difficult, apparently? Maintaining power-ups. Again.
There are also paths that you can uh, take as well that lead you to coins. So if you are close to 100 coins and close to a 1-up, it might not be a bad idea to go after them. But for the most part, it's really not that bad. And as you can see, once you reach this pipe here, that's the end of the level. We're done. There we go. Done. Another freaking life. Like, I really need these right now. I honestly do. Okay. Good. I needed that so badly. Ah, oh, damn it. I can't remember shit. Okay. Let's go. Second castle. Within this castle, we'll find more nuclear waffles, lots of lava floors, and piranha plants, too. Why am I not surprised? The game just loves throwing piranha plants at you that chomp at your ass and are in perfect harmony so you can't proceed unless you can get one to despawn. Of course. Now I can't get past this freaking castle. Seriously, game? Why you gotta do that? Hmm. I'll say this. This castle definitely is giving me a hell of a run for my money right now. Also, you may have noticed these uh, booze just hanging around and about. Don't take too long, otherwise they will kill you too. They'll only come and face you if you're facing away from them. So that is something you need to keep in mind as you're going through this particular castle. Ah, fuck it. Okay, seriously, where were my iframes? I swear to God, this version of Mario 3 does not have uh, invulnerability frames. It doesn't. It only has, like, one iframe, if that. And I can't maintain a power-up for longer than a couple of seconds. I swear to God. Like, every step I take, I just lose a power-up and I just end up killing myself. Just happens every single goddamn time. Especially with projectile-based weapons. I'm surprised I even managed to... You know what? No. no. I'm just gonna shut the fuck up. I'm gonna shut up. No, that's a reset. Man. I literally can't do crap. And I'm starting to sweat my freaking ass off here. I knew it. I knew it! I knew that I was going to die. I knew I was going to get chopped, and I knew I was going to die immediately after. And I also knew that Boo was going to fuck me again. Okay, so, new plan. Maintain Fire Flower throughout the entire stage. Burn every motherfucker alive. 
and pray to God that you don't get frickin' murdered by frickin' lava and piranha plants and booze at the same time. And it's like, if you don't maintain this fire flower, your ass is just fucked. You're dead. You're just plain dead. Okay. Okay, seriously, what is up with the frickin' AI and how the frickin' piranha plants work? How do they work? They do not work like they do in the original Super Mario Brothers. They will come out regardless of whether or not you're on the pipe or anywhere near it. Just like in Mario Brothers The Lost Levels. It's that goddamn bad. Seriously, screw this goddamn level. Okay, since when did Mario have Luigi's physics? I'll tell you, never! Why in that moment did he have his physics? It would be awesome if I could just win the level by doing absolutely nothing. <laughs> That would be the most hilarious thing ever. <laughs> Granted, I know that people in, like, Super Mario Maker have made levels like that, which are pure auto-scrollers, and you win by doing absolutely nothing. I think this will be fine. So long as I don't get shot. Or crushed immediately! Again! Oh, great. We have one of these! Okay. Okay, seriously? You just walk past your freaking brethren? Oh, this is just fantastic. Oh, God damn it. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised I even made it as far as I did. Oh, my God. That was a freaking pain in the ass. I really have nothing to say when it comes to that level. That was just plain awful. Absolutely awful. But at least that one is done and we can just move on to the next one. Which is more pipe hell with more piranha plants that love to frickin' shoot and murder you alive. By the way, it is possible you can skip this level by means of using a cloud. But I'm not going to do that. Okay, you know what? If I end up dying one more time, like there, I'm just using up freaking Starman. Fuck it. And of course, I got stuck. Stuck on the wall. Okay. Phew. At least the level was nice and short, though. It really was not worth it, because it only gave me a goddamn mushroom. <laughs> that was it. That was lame. I don't even know if you get any other item if you come in as another form of Mario, such as a uh, Super Mario or Super Leaf Mario. Who cares? Of course, the king here is a freaking piranha plant. I'm surprised that it doesn't shoot fire! <laughs> or try to blast off via its butt in the pl pot 
Uh, I don't even know where I was going with it. I'm just surprised it doesn't fly and shoot fire, too. I guess that's where I was going with it. Okay, now we have this wonderful castle. Or, not really castle, but more like airship. As I fall to my doom like a goddamn idiot and slip as if I was goddamn Luigi. <sighs> this is another one of those instances where it's a, it's a good idea to use the P-Wing. Just fly over this shit and just say, screw you. <sighs> Honestly, the best power-up to have for this stage is definitely the Super Leaf. Or the Tanuki suit. That way you can slow your descent down. Okay. To be honest, I'm kind of surprised that you can, uh... Hmm, another one. Another fire flower. Not that I really need it right now. But granted... I probably will be needing it within like three seconds. Uh, excuse me. Now, as far as what I can talk about today, I honestly don't have much of anything on my mind. And I also apologize if there's a lot of background noise coming from the fan. Also, fuck you. Yeah, this is not... I want to... It's one of those levels where you must use uh, those frickin' blue screws or bolts, whatever. You have to use them at a certain point in the level. And they're really, really picky with how well you jump on them. It's either you jump on them and you manage to uh, continue jumping... Or you phase right through. And just fall. Immediately. Thankfully, throughout most of the level, you don't have to worry about that crap. I knew that was going to happen. I knew it! I knew it! I freaking knew it! Of course, every fucking time I get a power-up, I always lose it within the first three seconds. I'm not fucking kidding. I am literally that goddamn bad at this game. And so I have to spend like 99.99% .99 of the entire game as small Mario. And pray to God that I don't end up doing that shit. Yeah, you really, really need to use the frickin' Super Leaf here. Or P-Wing. Oh, I hate to break this out. Well, granted, this is my last life and I do have a safe state prior, but hey. I'm just saying... I really wish you could store power-ups and save them for a later point in time. But no, that kind of mechanic wasn't introduced until, like, Super Mario World. And that is kind of lame, if you ask me. One thing's for sure, I'm definitely glad that it is possible to squeeze under tight spaces by means of just running fast enough and ducking at the right time. At least you can gain some distance by crouching.
Okay. Just gotta take our time. Go slow and steady until we reach the end. Again, like I said, the super leaf is practically required. And you also have to have really good timing and mash the crap out of A until you reach the other side. <laughs> Otherwise, your ass is just plain screwed. Okay, next Koopaling we have to fight this time is going to be Ludwig. And of course, I failed the freaking statue. I'm going to die. Okay, never mind. Oh my god, that was awful. Absolutely awful. But hey, good news is, this level is finally freaking done. By level, I mean world. And this guy looks like an Arabian prince. Okay, never mind. I'm thinking more like a Judas priest. Oh, thank heavens. No kidding. We're freaking done with this level. World. Yo, I kidnapped the princess while you were running around. She's here in my castle if you dare to try and rescue her. Ha ha ha. King of the Koopa. So, it appears that Bowser has kidnapped Peach yet again. <laughs> Why is that not surprising? Fun fact, in the original NES release of this game, the screen that flashed red just a moment ago... It was slowed down significantly in this version because it flashed far too quickly in the original. And funny enough, there was also a bit of a grammar mistake in uh, certain versions of this game where instead of the King of the Koopa sent, sending this letter, it would instead have been sent by a regular Koopa Troopa. Like, a Koopa. <laughs> Talk about having balls of steel, dude. <laughs> but, yeah, like future re-releases of the game, it was corrected back to uh, Bowser, King of the Koopa. So, with that in mind, welcome to World 8. The final world of the entire game. And this world is no joke. <laughs> There's a lot of fire and brimstone and... In another room coming up very shortly, we're going to see a heart around the entire perimeter. Almost like this place loves hell. <laughs> okay, here we go. Since this is World 8, this is going to be the hardest freaking world yet. <laughs> uh, throughout the first part of this whole whole world here we're gonna have to deal with several quote-unquote airship like sections so this first level is a freaking tank level we have to traverse away from one tank to another <laughs> no seriously that's what these things are they're tanks what else could they be But regardless, you have to jump from one tank to another in this auto-scrolling section of fun. And we also have to try to maintain our power-ups for longer than 10 seconds. Throughout this entire tank section, we'll find a lot of uh, cannons firing bob bombs cannonballs... And things like that. So be sure to keep that in mind as you're going through this whole place. Plus, the game does tend to lag quite a lot in this section. Just due to the amount of uh, cannonballs and other objects on screen. There's also this giant cannon here. Shooting big cannonballs that fire incredibly fast. That can easily throw you off guard. If you're not careful. All right, made it to the end, and here we have a freaking boomerang bro who is a freaking sniper. As I missed the first freaking jump, 
thankfully when it comes to this world in particular, there is a checkpoint system. So after we cleared the first two major uh, airship level-like sections, we will have a checkpoint from that point forward. So that is pretty awesome. And thankfully we won't get sent all the way back to the very start of the world if we end up dying at a later portion of the level. Or the world, rather. My mistake. <laughs> also, that was bullshit. By the way, these levels I don't think can be skipped in any way, shape, or form. Once you t land on that space, you have to take it on. You have to do it. So, welcome to die. <laughs> welcome to the fun, fun world that is World 8. A world that is literally pitch black. It's so black I can literally see the reflection on my television. <laughs> That's how extreme the blackness is. At least in this version of the game. However, in like the SNES version of the game from Mario All-Stars and Super Mario Advance 4, Super Mario Brothers 3, this was addressed. And it was given a proper background. But even so, it is something worth mentioning anyway. Funny how I made it through this whole gauntlet on my first try, and now I can't get back to where I was previously. By the way, using P-Wings here may not be a bad idea. But, again, you have to keep in mind that P-Wings are very limited, and you only have so many throughout the entire adventure. And once you run out, that's it. You won't be able to get any more. Also, fuck you. That was bullshit. All because I jumped a little bit too high in the air. Seriously. Screw this goddamn game. There is a power-up in this level, but it is quite a ways in. And you also have to try to maintain that power-up for the entirety of the stage. Which, like I've mentioned, is a lot easier said than done. Especially if you have... Skills as bad as mine. Okay. This first level can definitely take quite a bit of time. Especially if you end up dying like midway through or at the very end. Because you have to sit through the entire auto-scroller section all over again just to get back to where you were. Okay, come on! Again, with the bullshit! Why does the wrench always come out as I'm landing on the motherfucker? Always. Every goddamn time. It just proves that I can't maintain a power-up for longer than... longer than 10 seconds, if that. If I'm lucky. Every once in a while, if I'm somehow going beast mode, maybe I can maintain a power-up for even longer. But, no. Not here. Also, since this is the very last world of the game, uh, there's no longer going to be any toad houses whatsoever. So, uh, you can't get power-ups anymore. At least, no free power-ups, that is. Also, fuck you. Again. Oh, man. Screw this frickin' stage. And we still have many more to go through yet. <laughs> it's like I can't even get back to the frickin' boomerang bro anymore. Wow, it's like once you die at a very far point, or say, for example, you're playing Call of Duty, you get an extremely high kill streak, you end up dying, and the rest of the match you can't replicate the same results. You just fall apart and end up dying over and over and over again. And you can't go on a simple kill streak anymore. And you just keep racking up deaths to balance things out. <laughs> and end up ending up even or with a frickin' negative KD. 
Just saying. It can be that freaking bad. Ugh. Okay, seriously, how is it that they throw them instantaneously upon spawning in? That is not fair. That makes them impossible to literally kill them without taking a hit yourself. That's bullshit. I almost reloaded a freaking earlier save state. That would have been horrendous. <sighs> I would say that you really should take your time when trying to go through this whole level, but it's not like you have any choice in the matter. You've got to go through it no matter what. Also, for the love of God, whatever you do, do not hit end. Otherwise, you go right back to the title screen and you have to start the entire adventure all over again. That is not something I want to do. Ever. What the fuck was that? Seriously, what the hell was that? I am completely speechless. It's like I jump on the bob -omb and then I died immediately. What is up with this game and its freaking broken-ass hit detection? And here I was saying how this is the best NES uh, Mario Brothers game out of all of them. Well, that is true, but it's definitely not flawless. Don't get me wrong. Nothing ever is flawless. <laughs> uh. Again, it's literally impossible to kill those guys without getting hit yourself. Unless you wait for them to throw their wrench, in which case you'll probably be dead <laughs> before you can even get to them. I find it kind of sad that I can't even get past this first goddamn level now. Just like with the when we first started this stream. I couldn't get past the first level for like what seems like 20 minutes. Okay, since this place no longer has toad houses, or this world rather, you need to use your power-ups incredibly wisely. Wait for the opportunity to use the items. If you uh, use them too irrationally, then you're just going to run out of everything in your entire inventory really quickly. Again, now I'm definitely going to die very, very soon. I can already damn tell. Oh god, that was too close. Okay. Okay, you know what? Let's just create a safe state here. Alright, it's done. Cool. Thankfully, when you complete these uh, airship-like levels, you do get an extra item added to your inventory. So, that is pretty neat. You do get a couple more items before things are done and over with. Now then, this pipe does lead to a shortcut later on. And also, I think as you're going through the world and completing one airship like level after another, the levels stay cleared even if you get a game over. So that's pretty nice. Okay. Now with that in mind, it's time to head into the next one. The next freaking uh, airship-like level. This one is a submarine, I think. Then again, I think it's just a boat. 
like a really big freaking battleship, rather. <laughs> and again, I can't hold a power up to save my ass, and really, I shouldn't even be going for them. Oh, come on! Are you serious? You couldn't let me phase right through that? Seriously? Okay. Okay, one thing that's definitely worth noting is if you end up jumping into the water, it can be kind of difficult to get out. But if you go too far underwater, you will end up drowning. And you may be thinking right now, couldn't you just uh, get to a point underwater where you can just swim underneath the ship and just proceed that way? I don't think that's how it works. I think the ships extend far enough underwater where it'll push you into, like, the death plane. Also, screw you, game. Seriously. Screw you. Okay. Let's get through this again. Now, I'm kind of wondering... What I said before about airship-like levels being cleared, so long as, uh... So long as you actually clear them. I guess we'll be testing that theory out right now. Yeah, it's still cleared. Good. Alright. So, Ganga Game over here is really not that bad. It's just kind of a minor annoyance. Oh my god. Again, how is it that the cannons can fire straight, and yet they're able to perfectly scroll up and down on the frickin' screen. Okay, now I kind of want to try and see if it is possible to go under the ship. If I can even manage to make it that far, that is. <laughs> Guess we'll find that out now. If... Again, we make it that far. Of course, I lose the power up immediately after getting it. Why would I expect anything more? Well, well you know, this actually works. You just gotta mash the frickin' A button and move as far to the right as you can. That way you can avoid this crap. Then again, this probably works because I'm small Mario and I'm just small enough to fit under the death plane. Uh, who knows? God, just mashing the frickin' button can wear one person out. Okay, fun fact about that part of the ship. Uh, in the original Famicom release of this game... That one square pixel at the very end of the ship was not there. And if you ended up falling down under the water, or falling in the water, there would be literally almost no way of getting back up. So they fixed that with the international release of the game. So, that's awesome. Figure I'd throw that out there. Okay. I was wondering who I was going to be fighting this time. Thankfully, it's just good old Boom Boom. <laughs> I 
nothing of a real threat whatsoever. I'm happy with that. And there we go. Path is cleared. Now you may be wondering, where does this lead to? Well, I'll show you. Well, this does lead to a shortcut at, la at a later point in the world. However, unfortunately, we can't quite go down that way. At least not yet. Not until we can complete a castle level. At uh, the third part of this world. Alright. Now we come across uh, many speedrunners' worst nightmare. That is this freaking screen right here. There are five spaces here, but only three of them you can actually traverse over. So what makes this a speedrunner's worst nightmare is there's like a 50-50 uh, a crapshoot of whether or not you're just going to be able to just pass right through the whole square or if you're going to be dragged into the level yourself and f be forced to play it. So that is something you need to keep in mind. Okay, that was neat. Managed to get through the entire thing. And on to the next airship level. Which, my god, this thing is another auto-scroller, but damn is it fast! And what's even worse is, if you manage to get through all three of those squares without going through any of them and then die on that airship level, you get sent back here, so you kind of have to pray that you get through all three spaces again. And, of course, I wasn't quite as lucky the second time through. And, of course, I die anyway. Thankfully, clearing those uh, spaces does uh, award you with an item. As far as what that item is, it really is dependent on uh, the gauntlet level you clear. Whew. Okay, made it. Nice! A super leaf. Exactly what I needed. However, uh... Upon clearing... Oh, damn it! As I was trying to say, upon uh, getting a game over here on this screen, this does mark a... Okay, never mind. I thought it marked a checkpoint, but it kind of doesn't. At least not yet. Not until you reach the third area, which that does give you a checkpoint. Okay. Guess we're going through uh, Hammer Brother Hell again. <laughs> or not. Okay, then. Guess we'll be trying out this level next. Honestly, the third death trap like level may not be th that bad honestly the f first one is probably the worst one by far granted i keep dying on like the first two seconds okay i think if you clear a uh, gauntlet like level again before uh, finishing this airship, you can farm items. Or at least fill up to a point where uh, your inventory is nearly full and you can just proceed onward to the next part of the freaking game. Plus, entering those gauntlet levels, if you're not forced to be dragged in, it is entirely optional. Granted, I can't... Uh, I can't get through this to save my ass. Ah, damn it. I knew I was just gonna bonk and die. <laughs> ah, man. This game, I swear, sometimes can really be a ma major pain in the ass. Especially with this last world here. It is the last one, and it is to be expected. But even so, it's still annoying. 
Also, I didn't even realize I didn't have to go through here. Whoops. You're only forced to go through if you're dragged in like that. Okay. That was an easy enough gauntlet. What are we getting here? Another super leaf. Sweet. Could definitely use something like this. Once again, that's for sure. I swear, it seems like a super leaf is practically required for this airship level in particular. Though I can't maintain it! Because of these fucking Allen Wrench assholes! It's like you hit them, you die! And again with the Luigi bullshit! Okay. Well, at least the second gauntlet was not that bad at all. And it does give you yet another super leaf. So, that's nice. And again, I think you get nothing but super leaves every time you do those gauntlet levels. Though, I'm not 100% sure if that's indeed the case. But if it is, that's awesome. If not, eh. I knew that asshole was going to hit me upon uh, reaching this point. Every time, I swear to God. I just did not have enough room to jump! I just didn't have enough goddamn room, so I gotta do this gauntlet. Gotta do this other gauntlet so that way I can get another super leaf, which is not going to happen. Okay. At least the game is nice enough to give you a freaking mushroom for this section. That way you can just power right through it. Like, literally run past it. And also pray to God that you're able to go up the pipe before you end up inevitably getting hit. Okay, since I have zero lives here, I'm going to try this airship level again, but without the leaf. I say as I die immediately, because I'm just that freaking good at the game. <laughs> I'm so good that I run into the nearest enemy just to give him a big hug and give myself a goddamn handicap. <sighs> of course. Here we go again. Okay, note to self, if I'm forced to redo that Hammer Brother gauntlet, first off, wait for the first Hammer Brother on the ground to uh, jump above. There we go, that's better. Oh crap. Whew, okay. Managed to get through that particular gauntlet unscathed. I'm happy about that. Okay. Now then, let's try this again. Yeah, this is definitely one of those levels where... A P-Wing is practically required. Unless you really want to try to challenge yourself. In which case, good luck. Okay. 
You know what? I think I will go ahead and just use a P-Wing after we reach uh, the airship level yet again if I don't end up killing myself first. And the reason why I'm doing this uh, particular gauntlet level again on my own free will rather than just skip it Damn it! It's so I can get more super leaves and just keep farming them until eventually I'm stocked full of them. Goddamn cheap cheeps. <sighs> Damn it. I swear to God, this game just absolutely loves me. <laughs> it's showing all kinds of love here today. From throwing me against freaking Hammer Brothers, who I can't really dodge to save my ass, to freaking bullshit with wrenches. Thank you. And goodbye. There we go. All done with that. On to the next gauntlet. Hopefully I won't get completely murdered by fish yet again. Oh wait, that's the third gauntlet. My mistake. Boop. There we go. Another one. Another one. Now on to the fish gauntlet. Here we go. All done with that one. Okay, I think I'm pretty good for Super Leaves for the time being. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to create a save state. I know it seems kind of odd that I'm doing this, but trust me, I'm doing this so that way uh, if I end up dying here on this stage, which is a very likely thing, I can just simply redo the stage without losing the damn P-Wing. And besides, I think I only got two left anyway. This is one of the two. What the fuck happened? How did I die? How? I don't even know what the hell happened. Somebody clipped that shit. Whatever, I did it myself. <laughs> okay. Let's try that again. I have no idea what happened. But apparently, if you fly too high up, you'll probably, or no, you'll end up wrapping yourself on the very bottom of the death plane, which is at the very bottom of the screen, and you'll kill yourself. I don't even know how that even works, but it can happen. And you also have to pray to God that you don't end up getting shot down. Which, that can happen, especially if you fly too high up. Okay. There we go. We're done. Goodbye, you evil frickin' level, you. Phew! And with that, a new shortcut has opened up, kind of, but not really. There's still a second, uh, sort of castle that we still need to knock down. And knock out completely before the second path opens up completely. 
Okay. Now we're on the third and probably the most difficult part of this entire freaking world. Throughout this whole world map, it is completely dark, like pitch black. And you only have a small luminescent light around Mario. So you have no idea what levels are going to be coming up. But let me tell you something, these levels are going to be some of the most difficult levels in the entire game. And unlike uh, last time where we had some grace... Unlike last time where we had a bit of a grace period of a uh, level staying clear despite us getting game overs, this is not going to be the case here. God damn it, I knew that was going to happen. I just freaking knew it. Come on, again with that shit? I can't stay alive for longer than just a couple of seconds. I swear to God, I'm not kidding. Okay. Fuck it. It's really annoying that it's so easy to get completely shot down when you're going through these levels here. Oh my god, give me the freaking one up. I want it. Oh my god, are you serious? Are you fucking serious? Wow! Fuck you, game! All because I wasn't running on the ground prior? You couldn't give me enough distance? Jesus Christ, man. Mm-mm-mm. One thing after another, I swear to God. And also, why couldn't I crouch? Mmm. Why does it seem like crouching is the most difficult thing to do in this whole goddamn game, other than regular platforming? Seriously, screw this frickin' game! Okay... Uh, again with that? I literally cannot maintain a power-up for longer than two seconds. And I always get freaking killed by freaking Koopas, Paratroopas, etc, etc. Basically, anything that you can think of that can possibly kill me, it kills me every freaking time. Every time it appears on screen. I'm surprised that even worked. Oh my god, that was only the first level here. Thankfully, it is relatively short, but it's still really damn annoying to get through, especially with no power-ups. Thankfully, if you do end up getting a game over from this point going forward, you'll just restart at the third portion. Like this third part of uh, the world. You don't have to uh, worry about uh, redoing airship levels or the frickin' uh, three level gauntlet of death. You don't have to worry about those ever again. But we do have to worry about Mr. Angry Sun here and also that. <laughs> frickin' piranha plants that come out of the frickin' ground. Okay, they're not, it's not the ground, it's pipes. I can't speak right now, I'm just that freaking flabbergasted.
Oh god. Damn it! All because I didn't push the A button at the right time? Wow, again, why is it that you can't just hold the A button when you're on the frickin' musical note or just before you jump on it? It's like if you don't push A, your ass is just fucked. You're dead. You're dead. Simple as that. And again with the Luigi physics bullshit. Just flying right on through. Taste through a frickin' platform because bullshit. Okay, let's go at this again. This is not that hard. It really shouldn't be, but of course I'm not getting enough fucking momentum to get through that freaking piranha section. That's why speedrunners have a freaking fire flower so they can avoid that bullshit. Yep, I knew it. I just knew that was going to happen. I knew I didn't have enough momentum, yet I went anyway. I just went for it anyway, because potatoes. Why do I always overshoot that shit? All the time. Always overshoot or undershoot. There is no in between. And I made it so damn far, too, on the first attempt. And I can't get back there anymore. I'm always getting fucking murdered. I swear to God, you need the frickin' uh, super leaf here. Then again, it's probably not needed. No, that's fucking bullshit. Absolute bullshit. I should have bounced, yet I didn't bounce. I was like, nah, I don't feel like bouncing. Fuck you. And there I go again. There I go again. I just can't get past this freaking bouncing shit anymore. That's about as far as I can goddamn go. Because I always overshoot the damn jump and I try to slow myself down so that way I can make the frickin' jump, but I end up overshooting. Why did I slow down? Why did I slow down? You see, that cost me my life because I slowed the fuck down. I don't know what the fuck happened. It was like Mario just suddenly stopped giving a shit. I literally cannot play this damn stage. Mm-mm-mm. I just can't. Oh my god, finally! Although it doesn't really matter anymore, because I'm gonna get freaking murdered. Again with the bullshit. Freaking angry son just had to pop out of the goddamn ground and murder me. What's up with that? Why did I just suddenly stop? Okay, yeah, you need a super leaf here. You need it. You absolutely 110 goddamn percent need a super leaf.
Oh my god. I'm dead. I'm just simply dead. What did I goddamn tell you? You know what? Fuck it. When I get to that point, I'm creating a save state. I don't care. I am that goddamn frustrated right now. I should not be performing this freaking badly at this well, at this freaking level. And of course, I lose that shit and die immediately because I can't play this goddamn stage without a fucking P-Wing to fly over this shit. That's how over-reliant I am on the item. <laughs> oh. Christ, help me. Oh, screw this fucking level. This is probably one of the most difficult levels in the entire goddamn game. Because we got bouncing bullshit, we got piranha plants whose hitboxes are freaking broken as crap, who are practically snipers who never miss, and we also have the angry sun to deal with too. Of course, it's either I get hit by the sun or I fall in the pit and die. There is no in between. And now I can't get back to where I was. Again. Just because the fucking sun fucked me in the ass with a freaking porcupine. And I can't slow my momentum down once I'm in the air. Once I'm in the air, that's it. I'm screwed. I just have to pray to the RNG gods that I actually land on something. And I'm able to actually bounce. And not get fucking burned. <laughs> also, at this point, warp whistles are completely worthless. And the reason is they'll just warp you back to the very beginning of the entire world. And I think they reset everything, too. Let's try that out real quick. Yep, as I thought, it resets the entire goddamn world. <laughs> That's funny. Also kind of uh, irritating, too. I figured they would do something like that, but hey. <laughs> uh... Kind of funny if you think about it. You can just literally reset an entire world by using a warp whistle at the last world. Just... For the love of God, don't use it on the last world. Unless you're wanting to die and just throw everything across the room and just say, fuck you. Hmm. Sorry for the excessive F-bombs, but can you really blame me? Super Mario Bros. 3 really is one of those games where that will happen about 9 times out of 10. I knew it. I knew that piranha plant was going to screw me over yet again. Again with the strange patterns of the freaking angry sun. What the hell is up with that? Don't care. Level's done. Now, uh, there is a pipe here. I know it's kind of weird that there's even a warp pipe here in the middle of this frickin' path, but believe it or not, this is a shortcut. This takes you to a later point in the level. Actually, no, it doesn't. It's just, uh, it leads you here. So really, there's no point of taking that pipe whatsoever. It basically just acts like, uh, it's just there for lull. Just for the laughs. 
Just for laughs. That's it. Now then, welcome to uh, the first major castle level of this world. <laughs> In this level, we have to get a super leaf. Uh, yeah, we have to get a super leaf within some point in the stage, whether you come here beforehand with it or you grab one over the course of the stage. Although grabbing one and maintaining one is a lot easier said than done. God damn it! See what I mean? Fuck this. I literally can't uh, get through this without getting hit every two seconds by nuclear waffles. If it ain't nuclear waffles, it's frickin' piranha plants. And if it ain't them, it's some other bullshit. You also have to deal with conveyor belts in this room, too. Oh. By that room, I mean the room I was just in. We got a frickin' fire flower. This castle level is built like a maze. And you have to take the right door, which leads to the very end of the level here. And finding out which door it is can be kind of problematic. Especially if you uh, have no idea what you're doing. Like that. You'll just instantly burn yourself. Without even thinking. Okay. Okay, let's get through this nice and easy. Of course, unless you rob me of my A presses. Why does the game feel like doing that? I hate that shit. And it's not just this game either. Also happens in Banjo Kazooie. Quite often, it robs me of my A presses. Okay, see, that wasn't so hard. Ah, oh, damn it. Okay. Now then. One of the conveyor belts, uh, I think it's supposed to lead you to, uh, the exit here. Though, as far as uh, which one is concerned, <laughs> there is this P switch here that you press down, you would think to uh, go into the first door you see, but no, you have to go into the second one. Go into the second door after hitting the P switch, and you'll finally reach the end. Bada bing, bada boom. Still a shame that I can't maintain the power up throughout the duration of the stage. I always die immediately. Okay, and you may be wondering, where does this pipe go? Where does this lead to? Well, this acts like a shortcut back here. So, that is pretty neat how you can just simply warp back here pretty easily and skip that third section altogether. Now we're in the final home, we're in the home stretch, and I feel like I gotta pee. We have one last uh, major airship-like level obstacle to go through, 
And that is this final tank level. Let's do this. This is going to be the hardest tank level yet. As it is filled to the brim with cannonball... I mean, with cannons, cannonballs, bob on blasters, all kinds of stuff. There's a lot of things that shoot and will more than likely kill you very quickly in the blink of an eye. <laughs> I am dead freaking serious. It is that freaking extreme. Thankfully, after this, all we have left is Bowser's Castle. Quite literally. Bowser's Castle is the last level. Okay. Though being small Mario is uh, kind of disadvantageous, it does have its fair share of advantages too. There were several points in this whole sequence where uh, there were like a couple of sets of cannons and thankfully due to Mario's smaller size, he can squeeze in between the two cannons, no problem. Alright. Time to fight Boom Boom one last time, and he is done. And the reason why I made a safe state there was because I wasn't sure who I was fighting. Alright, I need to use the bathroom real quick, so I will be right back. Okay, I have returned. Sorry that took me so long. I really had to freaking go, like a freaking madman. But now that that's done, we only have one thing left standing in between us and game completion. That is Bowser's Castle. So, with that in mind, I'm going to break out this last P-Wing I have, and we're going to head on into the belly of the beast. Hopefully, we won't get shot by lasers or some other bull crap before we uh, get to the end. This castle, oddly enough, you can navigate through this place in a couple of different ways. And there's not really much of a maze-like mechanic. No matter which path you take, both paths, or all the paths that you can take here, will lead you to Bowser. So... That is pretty awesome. Okay. We are just about there, folks. And just like in Super Mario Brothers 1, you know you're getting close to Bowser when he starts shooting fireballs at you off screen. And here we are. Hello there, Bowser. How are you? Okay, so how this fight works is, unlike uh, the original Super Mario Brothers where you have to jump on an axe in order to get him to uh, fall to his doom, this time we have to uh, get him to smash these blocks that are covering the entire arena. Which, it can be a lot easier said than done, especially if you don't know what you're doing. And it can take a bit of time, and you may think that you can just simply float in the air the entire time. But no, that's not how it works. You have to stand on a certain spot of the floor in order to get Bowser to just ground pound it and destroy the blocks. And I don't like not having uh, hardly any hits left. Oh my god, that was too close. Just got one last push. You... Oh my god, I thought I was dead. Oh my god.
I knew it! I knew that son of a bitch was gonna kill me too! Right then and goddamn there! Oh, god damn it. And it was on the very last hit, too. That absolutely figures. <laughs> uh, just goes to show how much uh, I suck at this freaking game. Luring Bowser over... Oh, my God. Are you for real right now? Okay. Okay. We may have lost the P-Wing. Oh, God damn it. Never mind. I should shut up until we reach the end. Because apparently talking while also uh, flying and trying to dodge things is... Probably one of the most difficult things to do in the entire game. Okay. So at the bare minimum, you need to uh, destroy... Uh, or you have to make Bowser jump eight times in order to get him to fall into the pit below. However, if you happen to have fire flowers or a fire flower and you make it up to that point, you can instead just uh, throw fire flowers at him and murder him that way. Or if you're even better at the game, you could uh, use a Hammer Brothers suit to do the same thing and deal even more damage to Bowser and take him out really, really fast. Like, within as little as maybe five to six hits or something. Regardless, you can take him out really fast if you are, uh... If you're good enough with, uh, being able to maintain the form and also make it to the very top of the castle without getting completely murdered. Which is a lot easier said than done. There's a lot of things here that will completely wreck your day. <laughs> As I've demonstrated several times over. Plus, Bowser himself can be a, a really big pain in the ass. Come on, let's go. Oh. <sighs> God damn it. It's either I get hit by him or Fireball. No in between. What's even more dumb is... If there's like a block... Or something... On the same sort of floor plane as you're trying to get Bowser to crush on... Then that floor will... uh take the entirety of Bowser's fall without any sort of resistance. And there we go. We're done. And that's that. We're done. Hello, Peach. Good to see you again. Thank you. But our princess is in another castle. <laughs> Just kidding. Ha ha ha. Bye bye. <laughs> oh, that's too funny. I love how they, uh, she had the freaking balls to say that, too. And there we go. That, my friends, is Super Mario Brothers 3. It can be a really damn difficult and frustrating game. Especially for Endgame. Holy shit, that was a freaking pain in the ass. But, at least it's done. 
The game is finally over. Jesus flip. So, as of right now, we'll just uh, scroll through and see the names of all the different lands that we've been through. <laughs> also, that Koopa is praying. Was that Mario Tanuki statue originally like a crucifix? To signify a gravestone for a fallen Koopa Troopa? I can't remember if that was the case or not, or if it was always just a statue of uh, Tanuki Mario. Regardless, it was something that kind of uh, intrigued me. But there we go. That's the end of the game. Not exactly a proper credit sequence. That's to kind of be expected with the uh, NES games. Not very many of them have credits. That's for sure. And at this point now, we just simply hit a button or... What? Okay, you just hit start. It, and funny enough, if you hit start on the, uh, on the original international NES version of Mario 3 and you return to the title screen and begin another playthrough... You get access, your entire inventory is filled to the brim with P-Wings. So, that's awesome. That's kind of a new game plus. So, that's pretty sweet. Although, I'm kind of wondering if you have infinite P-Wings. No, you don't. Well, that's kind of lame. But hey, it is a nice little bonus if you choose to continue playing and you want to play through the entire thing again. But yeah, that's the game for you. That is the entirety of uh, Super Mario Bros. 3. I'm not too sure if uh, resetting the game now gives you those P-Wings. No, it doesn't. Of course not. <laughs> Alright. Well, like I said, that's the end of Super Mario Bros. 3. And that is the end of the Super Mario Bros. NES game lineup. <laughs> Minus the original Mario Bros., of course. But... We don't talk about that one. We don't. We just plain don't. It was an arcade game through and through. And it also has really damn bad controls. It wasn't until uh, the Super Mario Advance series where uh, it essentially remade Mario Brothers and made it with way better controls. I'm just saying. But regardless, this is the end of uh, Super Mario Brothers 3 and all the NES games of the Mario Brothers series up to this point. Of course, there's uh, other games here on the NES library I could play, but I think we're going to be moving on to bigger and better things next time. So with that, I'm just going to go ahead and end things here and go ahead and uh, say my goodbyes now. This is General Snivy with the Super Mario Brothers 3 playthrough. Thank you all so much for watching, and if you were able to attend the live stream live, thank you for attending. The next uh, playthrough I start, it's going to be starting after I get back from watching Murphy uh, over the course of next week. But the next adventure is going to be yet another Mario game, but it's actually going to be a little bit different. How exactly? Well, let's just say this. B. L. J. If you're a speedrunner, or if you've watched speedruns of that game, you know what I'm talking about. <laughs> B. L. J. at the speed of sound. You got places to go. You got to follow your rainbow. <laughs> okay, I'll stop there. Thank you all so much for watching. Hope you all enjoyed. See you all next time.